Hi, welcome to today's video in which we will do a reading very shortly but I thought we'd take a look around outside first because uh, it's been a while. Occasionally pictures appear on my page at uh, coffee.com forward slash twig and uh, down in the um, description below the video is a link to that if you'd like to see it. But uh, let's take some video, let's see what's happening in the old garden. Okay, so... There we go, trees are looking nice and sunny. We're just into August here. And uh, we've got some nice weather for a change. It's been a bit rough for the last week or so. Before that it was a massive heat wave. So all the vegetables and stuff are struggling. But it's a fine day, look, I've got clothes drying, drying on the line there. Ready for me to wear them in yet more videos. And uh, I make no apologies that my garden is looking a bit tatty actually. I do like to let nature have its way as much as I possibly can. Got some beetroot here. They're just about ready to come up and be put in jars I think. I have to get some vinegar going. And uh, over here what's left and not much is left of the brassicas. Got some rather sorry looking cabbages, but uh, the slugs have had a good feast, so I suppose it didn't go to waste. And uh, here's the broccoli, which is, uh, is not looking terribly healthy anymore either, but I had a good few meals off it. Got the leeks here, and uh, well, they've gone to seed, and uh, you'll already know that if you've been looking at the coffee page, actually, they've gone to seed. But uh, this is how I get seeds for next year, basically. And the leeks themselves, they get a bit kind of papery and uh, not all that nice to eat, really, uh, at this stage. But if you boil them for a long time, you do actually get a nice, uh, nice soup out of them in the end. Over here, the potato plant's starting to look sorry, but this just, oh, it's inevitable. It's the climate where I live, really. We have a pretty good growing season, sort of April, May and June. And, uh, well, quite a lot of that time was spent in heatwave this year, but they've done pretty well. We've had some fairly big potatoes out of there. We'll get them picked. And my next plan is to clear out all this lot and maybe clear out the, the row of first early potatoes at the front there because I want to put these leeks in, get them actually growing in the ground because these things do, they're doing very well here actually in their plastic containers but they do a whole lot better if you plant them in the ground and uh, it's all about working with nature. Artichokes, there we go, more artichokes and they obviously don't like being in containers because uh, there's the ones that are in the ground over there and they're absolutely massive. One of them's nearly eight feet tall there in the middle. Really going for it, so it should be a good crop from that this year. Some more cabbage over there that uh, didn't do terribly well. <laughs> and uh, I might as well try and show you the rhubarb. Oh, I've let it get quite overgrown because this is its first year and uh, it doesn't really crop in the first year. But there it is. Rhubarb in waiting for next year, no doubt. Not as hot as it looks today, so I've got a fire lit indoors, get some uh, hot water and I dry out the washing that wouldn't go on the line because it's really not a super hot one, but uh, it's a nice one all the same. So let's take a seat here in the corner of the garden next to the artichokes. Look, there they are, growing like mad. And uh, we've got some foxgloves going on over there as well. So uh, it's all looking pretty good. But I uh, wanted to be in the garden today because this one's all about grounding. And uh, if you saw yesterday's video, I was talking about how now grounding seems to be more important than ever with every crazy thing that's going on in the world at the moment. And uh, the more I think about it, this is maybe the craziest times of any of our lifetimes at present, but really if you go back through history, life does get this crazy quite often, actually, throughout history. And so I suppose grounding has always been important, but uh, it's super important at the moment, it really is. Um, 
The situation that's gone on around the world has left a lot of us trusting science more than we actually trust ourselves and more than we actually trust our spiritual nature and our higher selves in that sense. Uh, and that's really, it's pretty unfortunate, you know. Uh, I'm sure we've had to find scientific answers to everything that's gone on. But uh, they're kind of half-baked scientific answers as far as anyone seems to be able to tell. And that's uh, certainly how it seems to me. Um, it, it takes kind of 18 months to come up with the solution that they came up with in 12 months. So it hasn't really entirely been tested. Um, I have gone there, I have had mine, you know, because I didn't want to take any chances, basically. But uh, science really doesn't have the answers to this or anything else, to be quite honest, because it's just... It's pretty largely unproven, actually. Uh, I heard someone speaking the other day, and he said that uh, there is no proof for science. Well, scientists would no doubt argue with that and say there's a lot of proof for science. But uh, it's only proof in the here and now, you know. It, it really is only proof of, of what's going on in the moment or what's gone on in the last sort of 300 plus years since Isaac Newton, really. And the planet is so much older than that. Um, there are theories that uh, the ancient Egyptian pyramids might have been built 69,000 years ago. And I'm no Egyptologist and I don't know if that's actually true. I don't know what to think about that. But what I think about the whole general thing is that sure, you know, there are so many kind of catastrophes and ice ages going on. If you start looking at life in terms of million year cycles, so much goes on. You know, it's impossible to know what was here before and what might have been wiped out. And we really, really need to be hanging on to that idea at the moment because uh, so much is on the change and it'd be easy to go with the flow of change and just get carried away from the absolute basics of life, which are what will always sustain us. Uh, if I just kind of turn the camera around on the garden a bit, there you go, it's all a bit messy, but... I'm getting food out of that. I've had a really good meal out of that lot today, actually, already. I've had many meals out of it this year. And it's not even harvest time, you know. It hasn't even finished growing yet. So the magic of nature is really profound and really powerful. So uh, grounding exercises are really great in that sense. It's a wonderful way of protection. It's a wonderful way of setting yourself free to actually fly to the higher realms. And I think that gets forgotten all too easily. Uh, people often say to me, well, if you ground yourself, or if I ground myself, how am I going to be able to get into the higher chakras and work with the angels and do all the spiritual stuff? And uh, actually, it's if you don't ground yourself that you're going to have problems with that. Because, uh, as I said in, uh, I think it was last Friday's video, there are always, uh, you know, spirit guides and guardians and our gatekeepers who will actually want to look after us and will, will want to help us. Um, and they just won't let us really take off and fly in, into the outer space of what we call the universe and spiritual truth and knowledge if we aren't safely grounded because we actually do live in this world. One of the best things I've ever been taught, actually, you live in this world, the man said, and he was so right. Uh, these are the lives we're meant to have. This is the incarnation we're meant to be in. And, you know, past lives and everything, great. It, it's wonderful to get knowledge of those. But this is actually the life we're living at the moment. And we make so much more spiritual um, progress the more we're grounded in this world. And uh, it's very easy for me to talk about grounding when I'm sitting here with my, my feet planted actually on soil. A great many people throughout the world don't have that uh, benefit, don't have that ability to actually ground themselves in a country place, in a rural place, even though this is the world as we were given it. This is what we're meant to sort of live in. Um, and yet I find that I'm incredibly lucky to be able to live somewhere like this because most people can't. Um, even my cat here, I've got two wonderful cats as you know. And uh, one reason for doing this video actually was that we just haven't had uh, Tinkerbell and Marcy in the videos for absolutely ages. Because <laughs> they're living outside at the moment. They only come in the house when outside gets really inhospitable. Or they come in for their breakfast in the morning, don't you puss? Hmm? 
come in for your breakfast, don't you? Don't mind that. I oh, know. And you're always there asking people to subscribe to my videos, which is no bad thing. <laughs> Um, by the way, guys, do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because uh, more videos come in all the time, you know. Uh, it's great for me to network with you guys. And uh, if you get subscribed, it just creates another level of link, uh, another sort of bonding level. And it helps our spirit guides get zeroed into each other, which is really no bad thing and which is no end of help. So do please subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway, um, yeah, grounding, let's just say it again. Um, really, really, guys, ground yourselves. It's so important. And uh, I'm not saying don't trust science. It's one of the best things we've got going for us uh, in this present day and age. And uh, I'm sure it has brought the answers to a lot of the troubles that have been going on in the world. But uh, whatever you do, don't forget the source, you know. I mean, like, I would say that God or the Great Spirit or the universe gave us science. It's, you know, we've evolved to have that kind of inquiring mind and to learn these things and to come up with these amazing solutions. So I've got nothing against science. I'm all in favour of it. But uh, remember, you know, the source of science is also the source of you. And, it, it, you know, if you kind of start going down the line of accountability and stuff, it all comes back to the source. And uh, that source is a mystic thing and it is a mystery and it will always be a mystery. Um, you know, we just can't see so far back in time that we're ever going to be able to know exactly what happened. Even the scientists can only say it was the Big Bang. And it always makes me laugh when I hear scientists talking about the Big Bang because uh, it's just about the most unscientific thing you can say about anything. And yet, it's all they actually know, you know, uh, as a reason for the origins of the world and, and why any of us are here and why anything is like anything. Um, crazy. So do ground yourselves, guys. Now, I'll just quickly run through a grounding exercise, which uh, I'm sure you'll have done if you've ever done guided meditations. You, you, I would think you'll almost certainly have been taken through this. Um, it's basically it's about sitting with a nice straight back. That helps because that gets the chakras all in line. So I'll do that. Uh, sitting and you can do this lying down as well just if you do uh, don't lie all sort of bent up try and lie in the nice straight line uh, it's important to have the chakras all lined up uh, in terms of the spiritual progress you want to make with your meditation excuse me and also for grounding purposes so get your feet nice and flat on the ground and uh, you visualize you imagine roots growing out at the bottom of your feet and going deep 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 into the earth all the way through the earth's crust down and down and down to the earth's core wrapping round the earth's core coming back up again coming out of the ground and grabbing you around the ankles and that's okay because they're your roots you control them and you control you but when you've got your roots down like that Nothing can knock you off balance. Nothing can take or take you off your course. Uh, it's very, very protective, actually. And if you are beginning a meditation, then don't forget also draw down that bubble of protection, the old cosmic condom. It's, uh, it's very useful and very good for that. Draw that bubble of protection around yourself. And, uh, you know, then you're grounded and you're protected. And this is great. So there's the protective element of grounding, which is a very strong one, and it does allow you to, to travel even further on your uh, on your spiritual journey in, in quite a spectacular way actually but the other side of it is just you know what are we doing in any kind of spiritual pursuit we're drawing down divine knowledge superhuman knowledge which is really too much for any of us to take in we're drawing it down and we're grounding it in the earth we are the channel between those divine realms that universal amazingness and uh, mother earth you know and they're always trying to be in touch so let them get in touch through you and that way it's going to be pretty good for all concerned it's the highest good for all concerned and it's the highest good for whatever you're trying to do in your spiritual pursuit friends so with that let's go into the old house into the old warm and we'll get some cards out and we'll do a reading all about this
So let's read and by the way I'm still wearing yesterday's clothes because it's still yesterday here. I thought I'd just get that one in. <laughs> Takes a while to upload these things. So uh, we are going to read using a significator card from Kyle Gray's Amazing Keepers of the Light deck and uh, we'll also use my old favourite and I think many of your old favourite Tarot in Wonderland deck. Just before I do though it occurs to me to just mention crystals. Right, it's a subject for another video really, and I'm sure I will make another video about it pretty soon. But uh, here's just these two I've got to hand at the moment. This lovely double pointed, very natural, still got the, uh, the original kind of bedrock stuck to it. Very natural double pointed quartz. And uh, another kind of double pointed quartz actually. Bring it up close to the camera, is it going to focus? Come on, focus, focus, focus. No, excuse my filthy, dirty nails, by the way. But, uh, yeah, this has got one point on the front here, and it's got another point kind of sticking up on the side of it. And um, that doesn't have to be double-pointed, actually, but um, crystals, very, very, <coughs> excuse me, crystals, very, very powerful energy, and uh, a link to the earth, and in terms of staying grounded, keeping grounded, that's really what it's going to be all about, and it's going to make a big difference if you can work with crystals, and anybody can work with crystals, actually, you've just really got to decide that that's what you're going to do, and start looking into it. Tons of videos on YouTube, one from me coming out very soon, I'm sure. But the earth is a giant crystal, there are huge pockets of crystals buried deep in the earth which humans will never uh, actually discover, you know, and uh, you can get crystals like the ones I've showed you which have been dug out of the ground, you can get beautiful highly polished crystals which have been dug out of the ground and then polished with extreme uh, heat and everything, I'm not sure they're quite as good as the ones that are in the ground and uh, if you just kind of visualise, I'm always talking about visualisation, there is another idea for another video actually, but if you just visualise and uh, really kind of uh, believe you will develop that understanding of crystals in the earth and you will develop a link to them as well don't have to spend any money that's the good news okay so I've just been shuffling while I was talking there and here's our significatory card for this reading it's Commander Ashtar it's call to action and it says on it take charge lead by example walk your talk <clears throat> And I think he's kind of saying that to me in some ways, because uh, that's really what I'm doing with my YouTube channel. You know, I'm walking my talk. Um, it's it's important to find a way of doing that. It doesn't have to be YouTube. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. But it's important to actually do that. And that is a big part of grounding as well. It, grounding is all about making things real, making things work on this earth. Mmm. Nice drink of tea. Okay, and we will do five cards now. I'm going to have a quick shuffle of uh, my Tarot in Wonderland deck and we'll see what comes out. Let's give it some more. Turn it over, cut it a bit, pull a chunk out of the middle. Do it that way. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to cut the deck five times and we'll take whatever comes out five times over. Right, that's three, four, and five, there we go, okay, now then, if you watch my videos, you'll have seen this deck lots of times before, I'm sure, it's the one I use nearly all the time on my live videos as well, and if you haven't seen a live video yet, please do check them out, that's just dropped one on the floor there. Because uh, I do two or three of those every week. Ideally I would do three, but my internet cuts out sometimes and I can't, you know, uh, get them all up. But two or three of those a week, they're always there. And if you come on board and join us on a live, I can pull a card for you. And uh, that is really the most direct sort of one-to-one -one way of working. So do hit the subscribe button and you'll get notified about all of those. If you'd like a private reading, my Gmail address is down there in the description, along with my coffee page link and my PayPal link if you'd like to support me in my work. Many of you have and it is very much appreciated. It really is. Anyway, here we go. We will go one, two, three, four, five. So if you want to pick a card, now is the time to do it before we actually know what the cards are. Be your own psychic. I'm always saying it. 
because it always matters. And what is card number one in this reading? With the intent of uh, discovering more about ground and getting some celestial input, if you will, about the whole nature of grounding and the need to do that. Card number one is this one. It's the Lovers, which is number six in the Major Arcana. There it is. Uh, do excuse the filthy nails, by the way. I've been gardening. It is genuine soil out of the earth, which is what this whole video is about. So, number six, the Lovers. Well, six is a wonderful magic number in its own right, for sure. And uh, the numerologists among you will know the meaning of that, for sure. But uh, the Lovers, you know. Now, this is a card that's often associated with romance and when it comes up it's often in you know to do with relationships and it comes up a lot in relationship readings but this is all about grounding and so this is about our relationship with the earth and it is a very very loving relationship actually we call the earth mother earth so often for a good reason that that name that way of looking at the earth has come into being for a very positive very strong reason that there is a lot of love between us and the earth and the earth is a very mothering influence absolutely for sure you know we, we think about mothers as uh, the women that give birth to us but when you think about it the earth has that feminine energy that divine feminine that goddess energy and it's the earth that gives birth to every single one of us so do get grounded i'm going to probably say that for every card that comes up it's super important it really is now if we look closely in the background, there's like uh, what we could call topiary, I suppose, like a topiary heart, just up here, where someone has taken nature and clipped around it and cut it into a shape. And you can, you know, you can get nature to behave in the way you want it to behave, for sure. That's rather an artificial way of looking at it. But it's still a natural tree, you know, and uh, whatever we do with Mother Earth, she is still there for us in a big way. And we can use Mother Earth's resources the way we want to, as long as we do it with love and as long as we do it with respect for nature and everything that's involved with nature. So that's card number one, the lovers. Let's see what we get next then. What is card number two? Did you choose card number two, my friends? Hmm? Here it is. What's it going to be? It's going to be... The Nine of Swords, there we go. Air sign energy, Gemini, Libra and Aquarius tied up with this card. And uh, so here it is, the Nine of Swords. And this points out the tangled web that we live in in this world t today, you know, trying to uh, kind of have respect for everyone's different opinions and trying to have respect for the whole world, the whole the whole thing, you know, because uh, the earth energy isn't just down there beneath our feet. It's, it's all around us. This is another good reason to get grounded. And uh, there are so many problems in the world at the moment. They're all kind of twisted and tangled up. There's politics, there's uh, the pandemic, there's money issues, so many different things. You know, I'd be here all day if I tried to list them all, but lots and lots of tangled up problems. And what we've got here is the Mad March chair woken up in the middle of the night, uh, absolutely with his hands over his face, really, really worried and concerned about a lot of different things which are represented by the nine swords hanging over his head. Now, no one would be able to solve all their problems in one go, and with all the problems we have in the world today, they're never going to be all sorted out in one go. Absolute fact of life. But what we need to do is sort things out one at a time, just take one of those swords down at a time, do something about it sort something out and then the other eight swords are much less complicated to deal with um, the troubles we've got in the world are facts of life you know but we can sort them out one at a time and I would say step number one is to ground yourself it really is you know and um, that's a spiritual way of looking at things for sure but uh, everybody needs to do that everybody needs to be kind of on center somehow or at least know where their center is and at least have something you know stable underneath them to stand on a stable platform to hold them up in the world so that's number two nine of swords card number three is this one and it is 
the Three of Wands. So now we've come away from that sword air sign energy. We're into the fire signs here. Leo, Sagittarius and Aries. And uh, this is card number three. So it is the heart of the five card spread. And the ships are coming in. The white rabbit is looking at his uh, pocket watch there. I hesitate because <laughs> I've never been totally sure if it's the Mad March Hare in the Nine of Swords. But this is definitely the white rabbit. The Nine of Swords is all that blue color because it's at night and uh, here we have the white rabbit looking at his watch the three wands planted in the ground represent progress you know and a fire of progress something really positive happening to change things and the ships represent what's coming in at the moment and um What's coming in at the moment is a lot like karma. The more positively we react, the more uh, seriously we take the important things in life, I guess, which is, you know, it's a very grounded approach, isn't it? If you think of what are the most important things in life and uh, tailor your responses in that way, then... Um, things change in a positive way just like karma okay if you've got bad karma coming towards you in some way then um if you do something about it to put it right and your whole attitude changes and you've, you've sorted out whatever the karma was about, that karma will arrive in a way that's completely adjusted to you and what is actually right and fair for you because karma is a very fair force. So with all the problems in the world, they will actually be adjusted for the better. Um, a little bit at a time, you know, every one of us plays a part in this and every one of us that adjusts to the problems in the world is another little plank in the platform on which the whole earth, the whole Mother Earth thing, the whole world is standing because uh, Mother Earth holds us up and it's a mutual thing, you know, we, we have to support her as much as we can and uh, all the political issues and, you know, whatever kind of issues, money issues, disease issues, whatever they are, they are all actually part of this world, they are all a big part of, um, well, let's put it another way, they're all influenced by the fact that this is the earth, you know, and this is what we're all made of, this is the place where we've evolved to be like this. So, number three there, the three of wands. Okay, so moving on, <coughs> excuse me, short term future, what is going to happen if we get more grounded? Card number four, if you picked card number four, this one is for you. And it is the Two of Cups. Okay, so cup sign energy, uh, uh, sorry, cup suit energy, which is this, what is it? It's the water signs, Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces, obviously, because you can put water in a cup. The cups are all about our longings, our desires, the things we want to see coming into being and the change we want to see happening in our lives going forward. And uh, you see at the top there, there's this green teapot pouring in green inspiration into the Two Cups. It's another cup, uh, sorry, it's another card which is often associated with love readings and romance because it can mean two people coming together. But here we have uh, the Mad March Hare and the Mad Hatter, two total crazies in this Tarot in Wonderland deck, um, kind of toasting the future, I guess. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but they're certainly having a toast to something, and uh, that's always going to be something in the future, I'm sure. And uh, because they've got the right attitude, because they are good cu custodians of the earth, and you know, you think about the uh, what, what the hare does in particular down there in the ground, it's all part of looking after the earth in a natural way you know it's it's all natural instincts with animals and uh, there he is and so because of that groundedness because of that respect and that love for the earth which the rabbit isn't even so which the hare isn't even aware of the uh, divine energy is flowing very strongly into their cups so ground yourself be respectful of mother earth and your cup will run over today when i'm doing this is the first of august and it is actually Lamis, which is spelled Lugnasard, but uh, sometimes these days it's spelled as Lamis. It's pronounced Lamis, always has been. And uh, it's a very important date in the turning of the year, so it's a good time to be doing this. Um, 
So this brings us to card number five. Let's take a look at card number five. Whatever have we here? Okay, this, guys, is the seven of wands. So we're back to that fire sign energy here. Interestingly, we haven't had one pentacles card in this reading, actually. And the pentacles is uh, all about the earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. So it is very earthy energy. So I see we're being advised what we can do outside and around of the earth that we live on to make a difference and um, this is the outcome card and as with all outcome cards it's leading on into the future it's about <clears throat> something else happening it's about where we're going and um, so in the seven of wands there is Alice and she is fighting quite a big battle there. It's a kind of a pointless battle in some ways, but it is very important for her to win it. And all these ones that are bearing down on Alice, these are the problems that are going on in the world today. This is what's so difficult to deal with about life at the present time. Also in this card, and I'm not sure how well you can see it, hope the camera's focused there, it looks as if it might be, <laughs> which is about all you can hope with, for with cameras these days. Some of the cards are facing up and some of the cards are facing down. Now when we can only see the back of a card in this deck, the way this deck is put together, there's stuff happening that there's nothing we can do at all to change it. When we see cards showing, actually showing the front of the card, in this deck it's pointing to something we can actually do something about and it's letting us know that the game is still on and uh, there's a mixture of both in this deck i would say just about even so there is lots that we can actually do about what's going on in this world but let's come back now to commander ashtar call to action take charge lead by example and walk your talk just focus on that one guys that's so important okay taking some kind of action really matters and i'm not talking about kind of going out on demonstrations and marching and anarchy absolutely nothing like that but do lead by example okay if 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 you're an earthy person who cares about these things and you're a believer in magic, you'll often find yourself a bit ostracised, a bit pushed out by the people around you in this world. And that, unfortunately, is the way of things, really, because most people want to believe the narrative that comes from the media, the narrative that comes from government. And as we are seeing right now in terms of the pandemic, that narrative hasn't been exactly right. It hasn't been pointing us in exactly the right direction. So I think we're all kind of finding out that uh, the magic believers among us were uh, right all along. And we're always going to be right, because when we're a believer in anything like that, we have a much deeper connection with the earth and we have a much uh, deeper understanding of what's going on in the world because we're kind of seeing things before they happen. We're understanding things as they come into being. So there you go. Lots of reasons to get grounded there. And uh, that is today's reading. Thanks very much for watching. If you'd like a reading of your own for a small fee, because this is what I do for a living, do uh, shoot me an email, 35and83 at gmail.com. If you want watching in the future don't worry about what I'm going to say next but if you're watching now and you want a private reading I would get one done pretty soon my friends because unfortunately just the way of everything I have to put my prices up in September for those private readings so if you'd like one get in touch now 35and83 at gmail.com um, also if you'd like a birth chart an astrological birth chart uh, also, same email address, 35and83 at gmail.com. If you'd like to support me in my work, big thanks to all of you who have, by the way, because a lot of you have supported me in my work, and I really appreciate it. You're supporting me just by watching this video, but uh, if you'd like to kind of help oil the wheels of all the money that gets involved in this kind of thing, uh, please consider sending me a donation through paypal.me forward slash twig brother, or visit my coffee page at coffee.com forward slash twig all those inf all those links the emails and coffee and paypal are down there in the description while you're down there don't forget to drop a like on this video guys it helps no end and please hit the subscribe button because there are more videos coming up all the time with that i'm going to say thanks ever so much for watching have a beautiful time ahead i'll be back soon with another video meanwhile be good to each other and i wish you all love and light and blessings and i say to you peace